now. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Wine Vault Radio with Jason Bryant from WineVaultTV.com. Always something to look forward to every Friday on the show. Wine <laughs> tastings in the Kiwi <laughs> studio. Oh, I've got my smile on. Oh, so have I. I'm just thinking kind of like the, the umbrella industry must love this weather. <laughs> yeah. They must be yeah. praying for this every day. Yeah. We're uh, not, although, for, although we're, we're not big um, users of umbrellas like, like, um, like people who live in Tokyo are. For example, really? Yeah, that, are they are high There's umbrella whole... per capita. They have more umbrellas than everybody else. Yeah, well, I think so. And That's you can... a kind of statement that uh, New Zealand makes very often. But, but so they, they not only have the umbrella industry; they've also got the plastic industry that make the umbrella sheaths. So when you go into a store yeah. in in Tokyo, there's yeah. there's a place where you you put your umbrella into and you insert it in, and then you pull it out, and it's got a plastic sheath over the top, a throwaway plastic sheath, which probably isn't very cool, but um, my God, I, I know. Uh, why? <laughs> exactly. Most have a piece of string that you just tie around so with a bit of Velcro on the end. Where, there you go. And so you don't, you know, flap water all over the store, all over the, the nice things, oh, the fabrics. Right, okay. It's a shame you can't just put it back and it takes it off. Uh, yeah, that is a shame. Yeah. But so they've got these bins outside that are full of wasted plastic. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> But so it would be a shame need, to see something like that. Yeah, <laughs> we need some more plastic in the, in the world. <laughs> that we dust. Yes. Um, and budget day was yesterday. It was. Um, yeah. I, to be honest, I haven't really focused that much on it. To be honest, I... I you, the, the cut in the environment, um, environment department was, uh, or ministry was of concern to me. I already, I already knew that it was all going to be bad news anyway, so... I'm not sure it's all was bad, bad news. Isn't it? No. Long term, isn't it? It may be may feel quite good now with a bit of extra money in the pocket from the uh, from the tax cuts, but long term, are we going to be paying? I just said on the radio that they're really going to try to get the top top tax rate down to twenty four um, percent. Really? Yeah. The top tax rate down to twenty four. So what yeah. would, what would the bottom tax rate be? Seventeen, I think. Hmm. Yeah, it makes you go quiet, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Is that the long? Where did you hear that? Oh, just on the radio just now, the the, the tax. Did I say group. it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. <laughs> the tax working group, apparently. Yeah. The uh, company tax rates come down, twenty eight percent. Yeah. So that's good for, for small small business like yourself. Uh, do you know, not really. GST's gone up. Mm. Um, well, that's. I mean, you just pass that on, don't you? Or are you not? <clears throat> You've got to remain competitive. So it's, it's actually no. Everyone good. else will be putting up their prices. Yeah, but it's no good for small business. It's bigger. It's better for big business because you've got m- more volume. But it's, it's hopeless for small business. Are you going to absorb some of that? We'll have to mm. to remain competitive, so our margins go down even more. And so, yeah, snack bars. Yep, that's not good. But you'll just have to sell more wine on the internet, where it's cheaper to sell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It, just, is, it is cheaper. You just put up um, delivery fees. <laughs> But one of the things that made me laugh yesterday uh, about the GST rise was everybody was increasing the 2.5% on the, the yeah. cost plus GST already. Yeah, Mathmanics people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, TV3 uh, last night I was just l- one ear on the news and they were saying, go onto our website and check out the tax calculator, saying, I'm not going to trust your tax calculator. No. The, the, the rate that, that uh, 6 o'clock news gets stuff wrong, especially when it comes to maths, it's appalling. Yeah. I did actually uh, enjoy John Campbell last night. Um, uh, I quite enjoyed his interview with John Key. I thought that that was. Where did they go with it? Um, he asked some hard questions in the kind of five minute slot that he had. Yeah. And I, uh, I thought that was really, really good. It was quite nice to see some really good open debate and kind of really good journalism. Um, that's what I thought. Anyway, we're, we're, not, we're not on politics. Were there, were there pressure points put on? Yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually what, blushed. What, did he? Yeah. <laughs> Not John Campbell, but John yeah. Key did. Did you read um, the John Key piece in the Sunday Star Times where he had 50 questions asked of him by um, well-known New Zealanders yeah. around the country from the arts to music to um, poli- other politicians to all sorts of people, writers? Um, but I, I, the, the piece puzzled me in that um, there were some great questions being asked there, but because he had... Um, his staff, based, you know, him, he would have been involved, obviously, answering the questions, but he had a staff, you know, he had a lot of time to answer these questions. I would have liked to have seen all those questions posed to him in a live sense. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. No. Eh? Or controlled is what it was. It was like under controlled circumstances. Well, I mean, if you send those questions to someone, you, you've got all day and you've got your PR department exactly. to, yeah. to write the answers for mm. you. Yeah, I know. It's useless, really. Mm. It doesn't give you an insight into anybody. Mm. If you sent me 50 questions right on the internet, 
Mm. I'd send them back to you next week once I'd got someone to answer. Yeah. Them. See, it's conditional journalism, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, one of the highlights this week, which has made me laugh, mm. um, in the kind of social media realm, are these guys. Who? Whitakers. Yeah. What? Oh, thank you. Cheers. Oh, you've given me a chocolate finger. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, one of the things I did like, there, there was craziness on Twitter and Facebook when Whitakers finally joined. Oh, so they've, they've got on the bandwagon? They've got on, yeah, and they started following everybody and... Engaging? A- engaging, and do you know what? I've never seen yeah. any other New Zealand company get as much kind of um, applause and welcoming as they... Wow. Rather than do that kind of um, potpourri for Mickey Mouse... Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, there Whitaker's. was an online potpourri for Whitaker's joining. Yeah. I'm not sure how, how so you th- kind of rub noses online. A but, lot of passion um, out there for the brand. Uh, and I'd never really taken it that seriously. So you know, it's undressing. Mm. You'd call it unwrapping if it was Cabra's and undressing because it's Whitaker's. Um... I've got to say that is it is the best New Zealand chocolate. Very nice. Um, and um, made in the hut. Yeah, Pori Rua or somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it's all kiwi and stuff like that. They use higher cocoa solids. I think thirty three percent or something. I'm so guessing you've got massive. You've, you've got something to go with this chocolate. I have. I've got. Seen as it was a mission to get here this morning with the rain, mm. um, I bought a little mission iced wine, which. I'm not sure whether it could be against the, the Trades Descriptions Act, called an ice wine. Why, it should be frozen? Because um, ice wine is all about, kind of like, in Canada and in Germany, where they make I never heard of a, it. a large amount of it, you've got to pick at minus 10 degrees. Oh, right. Right, so you pick at, at, generally at night, at minus 10 degrees, and you keep those grapes frozen. Yeah. And then you press them, and you get minuscule amounts of juice out. And so it becomes very, very sweet and concentrated. And intense. Mm. And, but you also have the acid there as well. Nice. Um, now, I don't know whether you're familiar with Hawke's Bay, but I cannot remember the last time I got down to minus 10. <laughs> there wasn't there a, um, a <laughs> hailstorm there, a massive hailstorm? Was it Hawke's Bay? Okay. Uh, maybe it was further north, but um, the, 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 other, the other year, and it was almost like snow on the ground. Uh, how wrong it was, it? Mm, I think maybe it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Geographically challenged. <laughs> but that's the closest we've got to, <laughs> yeah. to ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Hawks Bay. Mm. Um, so I, I thought I'd give it a crack. You know, it's. Um, so is this a dessert? This is a, um, wine? a sweet wine. Mm. Now you can use it as an aperitif. Um, mm-hmm. I can actually smell it from here. I get apricots yet. just jump out of the bottle this right chocolate now. That's kind of. No, 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 that's why I bought oh. the chocolate because kind of sweet wine. Sweet wine and chocolate. It's very sweet chocolate. It is, it's probably a bit too sweet for this wine. Usually, kind of, if you have something equally as sweet as the wine, you get the acid appear in your wine and it becomes very balanced. Yeah. As well as a lot of people go, oh, that's too sweet, that's too sickly, it's too kind of concentrated for me. Lovely. As well as, uh, golden colour to uh, it. It has got a nice golden colour. But um, I'm just a bit dubious how they make it. Mm. Do you know what? I've got oranges, mango... Um, candied fruit. Got a banana in there. Yeah, banana. Yep. Yeah. Nice nose. So I'm almost walk, walk through a um a tropical forest with tropical all the fruits fruit for- <laughs> dangling from the exactly. trees. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely the acid. Actually, for an ice wine, that's got bucket loads of acid. Mm. It's not as cloying as I thought it was going to be. It's got some racy acid right now. I've still got the acid zinging, like, round on my palate. Raisins. Yep. You would get that raisin effect because the grapes would be, in effect, shriveled. Yeah. These are obviously put through a, a, a minus 10 kind of freezer to... to so they've artificially done it. Artificially done it, yeah. yeah. So you didn't have any any guys out there hand-picking. Brilliant, um, though, giving it a go. I'd li- I like it. It's a n- lovely dessert wine. I'd How much do you reckon? Cost? 
Ooh, okay, because well, it's because uh, dessert wines also come in a smaller bottle, right? Yeah, they're three seven five. Um, three seven five or, or five hundred. Usually get them. I'd say that would sit in the twenty five to twenty six. Value for money? Yeah. 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 Twelve dot. Twelve dollars. No. Yeah. You kid me. I, I kid you not. I kid you not, Sonny. Well, that's cheap. So you'd give that ninety five then? No, I wouldn't give that ninety five. <laughs> Um, I would give it 85. 85? Yeah. I, right. I think that's fair. Okay, it was the Mission... Mission Estate 2009 Eiswein. Eiswein? Yeah, that's where we get it from, Eiswein. Ice. That's what the Germans call it. Nice. And the um, vintage Whitaker's chocolate of uh, 2010. Sante. Um, yeah. Uh, good. Thanks, Jason. My pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure. WineVaultTV.com and The Wine Vault on Twitter.